Hey guys, what is going on? So I wanted to talk about how to grow your arms and more specifically how to grow your triceps. The reason I want to make this video is because I have struggled mightily with growing my triceps. They've been a very stubborn body part for me. And uh, over this last bulk and really the last couple years, I've put a ton of size on my triceps. And even though they're not super impressive now, I have seen the best rate of progress of my life training in this way. And so I wanna talk about what I have been doing differently from what I was doing before, how I've been able to accelerate my tricep gains, and hopefully this can help some of you guys who have some stubborn arms. So obviously, you know, as we know, the triceps are the biggest portion of your arm. And if we look at the biggest portion of the triceps, it's gonna be the long head of the triceps. I don't think anybody who is watching this video looking for uh, tricep gains doesn't already know that, but if you don't, uh, the long head of the tricep is really going to be the thing that I'm emphasizing in this video. So that's something for me that was very underdeveloped, and I've known how to train the long head for years. I've known the you know exercises that target the long head, and so I figured like, hey, I'm doing these lifts, I'm progressing on them, I should be getting bigger arms. And while I was slowly increasing my arm size, it was still like, hey, why are my arms nowhere near where they should be, considering my strength levels, considering how long I've been lifting. And I slowly started to shift my perspective on how I did these exercises or what exercise I was picking. And now I want to talk about what are kind of the main core exercises that I think are really fundamental for growing that long head and just the arm size in general, right? So a lot of people do the classic rope push down. So that's going to be the one that I start with first. So I always did this exercise. I treated it like anything else. You know, I would do three, four, five sets, however many I needed to do. I would do them, you know, multiple times a week. I would go to failure. I would do anything that you would expect. And, you know, my triceps weren't really growing from this. And so the way that I've been able to implement uh, these rope pushdowns to be an effective way to grow my arms has been using cluster sets. So if you're not familiar with cluster sets, there is a range of ways that they can be used. They are Sometimes used in a powerlifting setting, you can do it with something like bench press, or the way that my coach does it for me is doing it for accessory lifts. And so oftentimes you'll take a weight that you can do for 10 to 12 reps, something in that range, and um, you'll just do a set of five, rest 15 to 20 seconds, do another set of five, rest 15 to 20 seconds, continuously do that for five minutes straight, or it could be seven minutes straight. And this is the way that we have been implementing uh, rope pushdown. So as opposed to just the standard way of doing them, getting a ton of volume in with you know your effective 10, 12 rep max and just doing a ton of volume with that has been very effective for me. So um, cluster sets are something that you can use with any accessory exercise. You can use it with compound lifts, but it's a little bit safer to do it with accessory lifts. And it can really kind of reinforce that idea that you need to get a lot of volume and do really hard sets because by the end of that five, seven minutes, you're going to be huffing and puffing. It's going to be brutal. You're going to get a massive pump. It's going to be extremely, extremely difficult. And even if you push yourself to failure on like three sets of 12 on rope pushdowns, it's not even going to come close to comparing to doing a cluster set. So for me, this is a way that I like to take exercises that really don't seem to be all that stimulating for me. You know, obviously when I do those rope pushdowns, I'm trying to focus on the contraction, getting the long head of the tricep, but a simple three, four, five sets doing a moderate rep range, I just, I don't get that much out of that lift. So if rope pushdowns are an exercise that you feel are awesome for building your triceps, keep doing what you're doing. But if you find an exercise that you know is targeting the muscle that you want, but you're not getting the pump, you're not getting the contraction that you feel like you should be out of that, a great way to do that is to do these cluster sets. So again, the way that I outlined it is one specific way to do them. There are other ways to do cluster sets, but I think that's really kind of the way that is most intentional for growing a muscle group, as opposed to if you were to do cluster sets for a compound lift, you would treat it very differently. So that's one way to take an exercise that maybe you weren't feeling all that much before. Then I'll get into some of the exercises that I think have been maybe overlooked by people who aren't really um, you know, familiar with these or they're not doing them the correct way. Um, the next one is going to be what uh, my coach calls Grandma Josephine's, which is the uh, tricep kickback. And the initial way that this was kind of, um, this name was brought to life is because you think of the grandma in the gym who's using the two pound pink dumbbell and she's doing the tricep kickback. And so as opposed to doing it with a very lightweight, using a dumbbell, which I think is a very ineffective way of doing this exercise, 
If you use the cable machine, it becomes a much better exercise for the triceps. And the way that I like to treat this, for me specifically, considering I can go ahead and shift my shoulder back as much as I want to get the maximum shortening of that long head, I don't feel like I need to do cluster sets with these. I've never done cluster sets and I get a tremendous tricep contraction when I do this. So again, if you're not familiar with the shortening and uh, lengthening of a muscle group, basically there are two ways to train, you know, obviously doing a full range of motion, you wanna get both of these for a standard exercise. But if you're doing something like a tricep kickback, the point of this is to really get that long head of the tricep in the most shortened position possible, which is basically just the best contraction. So when you're shifting your shoulder back, you're getting that maximum squeeze on the long head. And so when you're doing something like that, as opposed to really focusing on getting like this maximum range of motion and really doing something like super slow, you really want to focus on the contraction, the squeeze, holding that peak contraction for a second and really making sure that you're getting a super strong contraction. And as far back as you can go and shift that shoulder back, the more contraction you're going to get from that long head and the stronger that stimulus is going to be. So as opposed to focusing on, you know, getting really sloppy reps, which can sometimes be the case if you're doing row pushdowns or if you're doing those cluster sets where they get really difficult, I think an exercise like this where you're really focusing on the contraction, just doing standard sets. I like to do three sets of 10 to 15 reps is a really good rep range for this exercise. And again, one arm at a time use a moderate weight, really focus on that squeeze, and you're gonna get a really good pump if you struggle feeling your triceps. And if you have to bring down the weight, that's really the thing that I have kind of focused on with this lift is maximizing the contraction, making sure that you're getting a really good squeeze, and then add weight as you get out of the rep range that you want. So for me, again, I like to work in that 10 to 15 rep range. If I'm doing excess of 15 reps, hey, you can just bump the weight up a little bit. It's not about progressively overloading in the sense of, oh, I need to add weight to this every single uh, week because going up five pounds on a tricep kickback is pretty substantial. So don't focus on that. Just focus on getting a really good contraction. Obviously do both arms and that's going to be a really good exercise for the shortened position. The next way that I like to look at tricep training is using the length in position and really emphasizing that as opposed to emphasizing the full range of motion, okay? So this is not to say that you shouldn't use a full range of motion, but if you're gonna do an exercise like a French press, an overhead cable extension, anything where you're bringing that shoulder and flexing it and having the maximum length in position of the long head of the tricep, the number one thing that you're trying to emphasize, just like we talked about in the shortened position, you want to really focus on the squeeze there, on the length and position, you really want to spend a lot of time with this elbow fully flexed, not fully extended, right? So the point of that exercise is not to lock out your elbows and get a massive squeeze because that is really not where you're getting the most tension. You really, really want to focus on getting a really long stretch, getting a lot of time under tension and really emphasizing that. And when you finish your reps on you know whatever overhead uh, extension that you're doing, milking that bottom position and getting a bunch of partial reps in is gonna be great as well. So again, I like to pause at the bottom, really milk that bottom position because you're focusing on the stretch when it comes to that version of that tricep exercise. So treat each exercise like it's either, hey, I'm doing the full range of motion, I'm trying to get a shortened position and a lengthened position, or if you're doing something like a tricep kickback with you know a cable as opposed to a dumbbell, shortened position there. If you're doing an overhead extension, obviously you really wanna focus on getting the maximum stretch there. And an overall theme that I've noticed with tricep training is the most important part of growing that muscle group is the stretch position. I think this is true across all muscle groups. So if you're doing chest exercises, I think really getting that massive stretch at the bottom for like a pec deck machine or, you know, a, a dumbbell fly, you really want to emphasize that bottom position. That has been the main theme of my tricep training. So when I do any exercise that's putting my triceps through a lot of stretch, I really, really milk that. And again, I do still do the tricep kickbacks. I still do the, you know, rope pushdowns, but I don't consider those to be kind of the main aspect of my tricep growth. I consider the strength, uh, the stretch position, lengthen position, that to be the most crucial for growing uh, these muscle groups. And that's kind of a general trend across all muscle groups. But if you're really struggling to grow something, really emphasize that. So if your quads are, you know, not getting 
the stimulus and the growth that you want, as opposed to emphasizing, uh, you know, something like a leg extension where you're focusing on the shortened position, really get something where you're getting that maximum stretch on the quad. And that can be true of uh, many different exercises. So I think with something like quads, as a great example, the quad is similar to the tricep and that a lot of people might struggle to grow it because they're focusing so much on the squeeze, on the shortening of that muscle. When people aren't emphasizing the stretch of the quad and i think that's why people have really poor quad growth and again really poor tricep growth and so that's really something that i would focus on as well another exercise which is going to be a huge replacement in my opinion for a close grip bench is going to be the jm press so this is an exercise that i never really consistently did Th those other two exercises i used to do but i didn't do them in the way that i currently do and the JM press is one where I tried it in the past and considering I wasn't using it in the way that I currently am, I wasn't getting that much out of it. So the JM press is unique in that you're getting a much better stretch than you'd be getting out of a close grip bench press. As you, you know, shift your elbows further up, you're getting that better stretch, right? So a close grip bench, you're going to be coming down right around the bottom of your chest area. That's where you're going to be setting the bar. A JM press can be anywhere above that, right? You can go to your chin, you can go to your teeth, you can go to your forehead. If you go all the way back here, it's going to start to turn into a skull crusher. So the point of a JM press is to really get that maximum loading that you would get from a close grip bench. Obviously, you'd be able to close grip bench a little bit more than you JM press, but you're getting a lot of weight on the bar with the JM press, but then you're increasing that stretch. And so a JM press is like a cross between that maximum stretch, for example, like a skull crusher that you could do but it's also getting a lot of that loading potential that you get from a close grip bench. So if you can work with the weight that's moderately heavy and then get a great, great stretch out of a jam press, really go slow on the eccentric, again, really milk that stretch position on the jam press, that's going to be the best way to get the most bang for your buck out of that exercise. As opposed to going for, you know, a really heavy weight and barely bringing, uh, you know, that, that uh, shoulder forward, you really want to shift them forward, really get that maximum stretch on the triceps. And so for me, I would say the staple exercises that I have used have been one, that jam press that I just talked about, two, any overhead extension. So that could be a French press, that could be a cable overhead extension, really milking that stretch position. Three is gonna be the Grandma Josephines or the tricep kickback, whatever you wanna call them. And then four is gonna be the tricep, you know, rope push down. However, again, with that one, I do like to use cluster sets. And if you find that the tricep kickback or any exercise that you find uh, that you want to do for your triceps, maybe even skull crushers or anything that you want to do, if you find that you're not getting a maximum stimulus out of that, feel free to do cluster sets with any of these exercises, except maybe jam press might not be a great, uh, great idea for that because you don't want to like crush your neck or anything like that. But outside of that, if you're really struggling with the movement that you feel like it should be giving you a good stimulus, throw in a cluster set on that and see how that works. Otherwise, really focus on either getting a maximum shortened position and really squeezing that, or if you're getting that length and position, really, really milk that, and you're gonna see some really good tricep gains. So hopefully that can help you guys. Uh, this has been the way that I've put on a couple inches to my arms in a very short period of time, and I'm hoping it can help you guys as well. So anyway, that's all I gotta say about that. I'll keep you updated, and I'll talk to you soon.